Ah, hello there. I'm Marcus Gansmeyer. I'm Bill Hansen. For the next few minutes, we will provide a brief outline of our paper published in this issue of Cell. Fruit flies are heavily dependent on their sense of smell to find safe food and to find places to lay their eggs. Drosophila flies, including Drosophila melanogaster, almost exclusively feed on yeast and other microorganisms growing on fruit, such as this orange. Typically on fruits undergoing alcoholic fermentation. That's why flies are so attracted to vinegar and to wine. Oh gosh, Bill, I do believe there is a fly in your wine. You're right, Marcus. A big one. Oh. In previous experiments, we have shown how very attractive some of the microbial odors emitted after alcoholic fermentation are. Flies are indeed attracted from afar. However, all microorganisms are not suitable as food. No, moles can be downright toxic. An important feature of the olfactory system is accordingly to separate good from bad microbes. Here we investigated how flies use their sense of smell to avoid toxic bacteria and moles. One of the telltale odors produced by many moles is jasmine. This is an odor to which the human nose is extremely sensitive. In fact, it's the odor to which we are most sensitive. It smells from moist soil and corked wine. Initially, we decided to target our investigations on this odor. How it affects behavior, how it is detected by the antenna, and how the information further on is processed in the brain. When we let flies eat or oviposit, in mold infested substrate, we could show very low survival for both adults and larvae. This is in stark contrast to when we let them feed or oviposit in normal substrate, not mold infested. Logically, we also found that the odor of mold as well as that of synthetic jasmine repelled flies from otherwise attractive substrates. Minute amount of jasmine was strongly repellent, stopped feeding, stopped oviposition. This is in contrast to a mutant mold, which didn't produce geosmin, where we had no repellent effect at all. Our next question was, how do the flies detect geosmin? In signal cell recordings, we challenged all sensory neurons on the antenna and palp with geosmin stimulation. Remarkably, only a single neuron type responded to geosmin, but to nothing else of the 3,000 or so compounds we tested. This neuron, AB4B, expresses the receptor OR56A and targets the glomerulus DA2. Next, we proceeded to record from second-order neurons innervating this glomerulus and providing input to higher brain areas as mushroom bodies and the lateral horn. These neurons display the same impressive specificity as the sensory neurons. A label line delivers the message regarding the presence of geosmin to higher brain centers. To test the importance of this input, we use thermogenetics to specifically silence or activate this neuron population. Silencing abolished all repellents towards geosmin, while activation induced repulsion. Geosmin input is thus necessary and sufficient for the repulsion behavior. Flies rely on a single compound and the labeled neural line to identify a large group of toxic microorganisms. We show that the presence of such a system seems to be the rule among most prosophilid flies. Similar dedicated neural pathways signifying detrimental aspects of the environment are very likely a feature of most olfactory systems, including our own. Prosophila neurotology really offers unique opportunities to understand the olfactory system and its behavioral consequences. We have here identified a single functionally segregated line into the fly brain having profound effect on behavior and consequently on survival and fitness. But to find it, we really had to think like a fly. Good job. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.